Good morning. Today is the day of Halloween. The monsters, the beasts, the witches. I never have been into Halloween, but a lot of people get into it. Uh, kids get excited for the candy. When I was growing up, uh, I always dressed like a hobo because I could dress like a boy. <laughs> So anyway, I'm making a video today uh, because uh, something happened and it's something that I have felt my whole life, but it just kind of, um, kind of hurt and I felt disappointment. Uh, not that it was meant to be taken that way, but let me, let me go into it real quick. So my brother-in-law, uh, the only brother-in-law that's been in my life, uh, he came over to help. He's actually, he welds. He's not a welder by trade, but he welds and he welds on the job and stuff. So he is welding my hour. I need to quit being singular there our arena in our pasture that we're building and so he came over friday and uh we got started and was lining the where to cut the pipe the top of the pipe where we wanted it and all this stuff and so we were working pretty good together and laughing and making jokes about being old men he's a year younger a year or two um uh, it was funny because uh, I was measuring a pipe because one of our lines wasn't coming out right. So we measured the pipe and he goes, well, mark it at the, at the half mark. And I said, okay. So I went to mark it and I couldn't see it because I didn't have my glasses on. I said, Mark, you're going to have to mark this because I can't see it. He goes to look at it. He goes, well, I can't see it either. I don't have my glasses. <laughs> we, just, we both started laughing, but he, he, I mean, he marked it close close enough but anyway so it was it was a good day and um I've never worked with pipe and it was all new to me and so uh when we were aligning I told him I said you've got to be patient with me I've never done this with you know before and I've you and I have not worked together before and so uh he showed me how to pinch the line instead of tying it and all this stuff so I one one time I was Wrapping it around, I was processing it like, okay, are we on the outside? Am I going to pinch it? And he goes, don't worry, I'm patient while you process. <laughs> it's just like, so, I mean, it was overall a good, good day. We were, I was on my feet for six hours and I was down for two days and still am recovering from that. But um, what happened was at the, close to the end of the day, uh, he mentioned that he was going to have Jeff come over to help him. Now, I was under the impression that he was going to train me, that he was going to show me because I'm going to have to do uh, repairs because my whole property line is lined in pipe and I already have broken property line pipe. And so um, he said, um, he was going to have Jeff, which is his nephew, his brother-in-law, his son-in-law and my nephew-in-law, um, because he said that he asked. And I'm thinking that doesn't make sense to me because um, Jeff wanted to charge me to do it. And I wasn't going to pay family to do it. I just don't think that's right. So anyway, uh, it when he said that, I was like, okay. Well, in my mind, I, immediately I got hurt because I thought, I thought this was going to be about training me. And, and then I got disappointed and I thought, man, did I do something wrong? You know, did I not help him enough? I, I, I was there every time he needed it. Unless he didn't let me know he needed help. Um, I was busy grinding when he cut the pipe. Uh, I was busy grinding it all smooth and all the chunks of metal left behind. So that that's what my job was that day. And um, and then the 
then it sunk in that, uh, and I've mentioned this before on, on my videos about being amongst the family, the guys, and being talked to, but not really being included. And I thought, you know, my, my first, after I, the initial response, uh, was okay it's the way i've always felt like you're never going to see me for mail i mean sure i've changed my name and you go by that and you see my physical changes but in your brain i th think that i'm not going to be looked at as male in a way that uh how do i say this uh, for me he it's just a guy thing. He he wanted a guy help. And I don't know. I might have this all wrong. And maybe if I approached him and said, hey, you know, um, am I not helping you enough? Uh, am I doing something wrong? And he'll probably say, why? And I said, because you're having Jeff come and help you. And he might have said, well, Jeff, because Jeff is actually uh, schooling for welding. Uh, he works for the largest uh, electrical company in California, and um, he's getting training through them to be a welder. And it might be that Jeff just wanted some more practice time. Uh, he's got a big test coming up. So, you know, but it's, it just goes back to the understanding that uh, unless they don't know us, and only know us as men, we might be treated not intentionally, but in their minds when they're deal when they're uh, communicating with us, it might be that they're just communicating with the person they've known all the time and not looking at, oh, I've got to treat them like a guy. Oh, I've got to treat them, you know. Uh, I, I don't know if that really you know, um, goes through their minds. But I, I just, I just feel like, although I was very hurt and disappointed and I was that whole night, I just felt that way. I felt empty. And, uh, I thought no matter what I look like and what I'm called, I'm still going to be looked at as female. And, uh, and then I got a hold of myself and I processed it and I thought, you know, I know he didn't do it intentionally. It didn't, it probably hasn't even crossed his mind how that sounded to me because he's not in my position. And uh, so, yeah, probably the best thing to do is just say, hey, you said, you mentioned about Jeff helping you, but, and just ask him, did, did, did I not do what I needed to do for with you? And he might not, that may not be the case at all. Like I said, I don't want to keep repeating myself, but Jeff might want the practice. And I'm okay with that. I really am because he's got a family to support and he already has um, some insecurities and I would like to see him build on his, in, on his confidence as a person. So uh, I, I'm okay with it when I processed it and thought about it and if that is the case uh so what i'm going to do if jeff does come over saturday uh, i'm just going to put the hood on that my other nephew-in-law let me borrow and watch him because there's going to be nothing else for me to do except for run the tractor and in that case uh uh i'll i'll learn that way even if it's not by doing because i'll practice myself I'll, I'll learn. I can do it. I mean, I know I can. It was just going to be nice to um, to do a little. But I may still. There's lots of welding still to be done on that on that arena. We only got uh, 21, 63 feet of it, and we've got like 300 and something feet to go. So uh, yeah, it's. I just want to share that in case. Uh, some of you guys out there uh, have felt that way in conversation with people that have adjusted to you, that accepted you, 
uh, I just want to remind you before you get angry, uh, being hurt and disappointed is okay, but don't get angry over it because a lot of times these people don't have the intentions of hurting you or making you mad or making you feel disappointed. Um, they're used to dealing with you at, at a different level, at a whole different type of circumstances. And so, again, I'm, I'm the type of person that I try to look at the best in every situation. I may feel that, uh, that initial disappointment, that initial hurt, uh, but I process it because I know that person didn't intend to do it. So I come out with, okay, the more positive is this, and I can always do this, and it's not the end of the world because I'm not treated like a guy at the time, if that was the issue. Uh, like I said, unless it's people that don't know anything about you, uh, you still might find family members and good friends that uh, reflect your you as that uh, female that you once were that they knew. Uh, it happens all the time when I'm around our Monday night crowd. Uh, a lot of the women, well, not a lot. There's a few women that tend to uh, start misgendering me, and then they catch themselves and, and correct themselves. But when they do that, it just reminds me that in their minds, I'm still that other person. I'm still, even though, and there's times when they, I mean, they treat me like Ethan, and they treat me like I've changed, but... There's things that trigger that old self to them. And I used to get uh, a little apprehensive when they would misgender me. I was like, dang, I'm right here in front of you. Da -da. I used to do that with my mom. When my mom was around me a lot, she started she and me. And she's gotten much better, but I'm not around her as much. Uh, and I've spoke about that on these videos. But I just, I, I wanted to share that and I wanted to just uh, remind any transgender person, whether you're male or female, uh, before reacting to anything, if you're a quick reactor or if you carry anger and it comes out in things like that, um, bite your tongue and sit back and just think about the situation. Think about the person. Think about if they are intentionally trying to hurt you all the time. Because if they are, honestly, I don't know why you're around them. You choose who you can be around. You choose to have in your life uh, people in your life that are healthy for you, that are good for you. Uh, I would not be around somebody if that was the way they treated me all the time and made comments and stuff. So uh, I don't care if it's family or not. Uh, I would choose. I don't have to be hateful. And I don't have to say, oh, I'm not coming around you ever again to their face. I just would choose not to be around them as much. If there was family gathering, sure, but I don't have to hang out with them. I don't have to talk to them all the time. I'm just cordial. I'm just, you know, but I, um, I refrain from being around them if they're going to treat me like that. So anyway, uh, everything else is going okay. I still struggle with... Um, off and on now with the energy level uh, and I did make a uh, compromise to my sorry sorry about that that was a doctor's office so um, I forgot where I left off at but basically uh, oh everything's going good I'm still feeling off and on fatigue uh, Oh, my first yawn. <laughs> and uh, so I did compromise and say on Sundays, uh, I would break my diet or I would add things to my diet. I don't really like calling it a diet, my eating lifestyle. Uh, because during football, I like to peace. I like to snack. And I wanted, I was trying to do healthy snacks. And there's just not a lot of healthy snacks that um, that satisfy the taste bud or the mental, the emotional attachment. 
So uh, a couple Sundays ago, I bought, I thought about healthy stuff and I thought, okay, what can I, what can I do? So I thought about cashews because I like to snack. So I thought, okay, uh, eating some cashews and then I had some pretzels. I ate probably throughout the day, a cup and a half of cashews, maybe even two. I don't know if it was quite two. I don't think I ate that much, but let's just say for the sake of it, two cups throughout the day. And I ended up with the worst stomach ache. I was, I did not feel good for a few days after that. The inflammation in my body, and, and I will show inflammation right in here. I will get like a um, half of a softball. It'll bubble up, puff up. And I'll get it if it's really bad on this side too, but mainly this side. And I was like this and my hands wouldn't shut. And I was just like, okay, that is the last time I'm going to have cashews because I don't like this feeling. My stomach was bloated. I mean, it was horrible, horrible. And um, I know it wasn't the pretzels because I've had a few pretzels off and on uh but again flour i i do swell up with flour real easy and i've had flour out of my diet up until we moved here probably about five years i was using um coconut flour almond flour that kind of stuff and then uh this past weekend i said okay i'm not doing that again so i bought uh, cheese squares and dry salami and that went okay but the, what I've noticed now since I've gotten away from the cheese is that cheese bloats me too and I don't feel real good after I eat a lot of cheese and I didn't eat the whole the little container of cheese uh, squares but I ate most of it with the salami so I am uh, I'm learning now on the weekends too, I like to barbecue the steaks and uh, I like to, I have the last couple weekends had bought a little uh, pre-cut bag of broccoli and, and carrots and, and uh, snap peas and I'll eat that with butter, but I don't eat the whole bag. I only eat like a, maybe two spoonfuls. Uh, and sometimes I have to throw it out or Tony will eat it up. But a lot of times she eats it if she's in the mood. <laughs> so anyway, um, and that hasn't bothered me. And I enjoy that as a treat. Uh, the whole thing about the carnivore way of eating is that uh, they suggest that you just eat meat for 30 days. Called It's called an elimination diet. Don't have any sugars, no carbs, nothing. Just meat, salt, and water. And then in 30 days, if if you want anything else in your diet, it, or if you still feel good, they suggest you go to 90 days. And um, some people just live that way just keep going because they feel so good and they've gotten rid of a lot of autoimmune or they've uh, it's they've caused it to go into hibernation and not had the symptoms uh, a lot of diabetics have gotten off their medications and, and that kind of thing so but in at the end of 30 days if you choose to add in some vegetables or something they suggest you just add in one vegetable to see how your body reacts to it because what we don't know in our American standard diet is that there are certain foods that trigger our body to act certain ways, but we can't tell. We don't think about the food doing it. We just think we have issues. So that's what they suggest is, um, is to uh, just bring in one vegetable at a time if you want vegetables and see how, see how you do. And they, they suggest like Brussels sprouts, asparagus, broccoli, the green, the greens, uh, because the carrots have sugar and, um, you know, tomatoes has sugar and uh, beets have sugar, you know, the sugary vegetables. They're, they're trying to get, they, 
if people have medical issues then or sugar issues, then stay away from those until you really get yourself lined out. Uh, if you're doing it for weight loss, it's better to go the 90 days on meat. Uh, and it's not, I don't know, it wasn't hard for me. I, actually, it was like an emotional relief because I didn't have to think about what to cook for dinner since I'm home. And I'm not, I don't like to bake and I don't like to cook. I like to barbecue. But I just had to find things to cook and I never know if Tony's in the mood for this because she's very, she's not a picky eater, but she's a moody eater. It's what she's in the mood for. So, but now she knows if she doesn't want a steak, she's got to figure it out for herself because that's what I'm making. So it's been a, it's been a blessing for me. But anyway, so I've decided ice cream doesn't bother me and I only have it on the weekend. If, if I have it and um, heavy cream doesn't bother me so I have that in my coffee one cup of coffee a day in the afternoon and uh, yeah so but the inflammation when I go off if I eat off diet then I, I blow up and that reflects on the scale and I'll weigh myself just to see how many pounds I gained from the inflammation. And one day, one time I gained four pounds just overnight and I could feel it. And, and it was water too, retention. And uh, within two days I was back down. But so I do this not because I'm dieting because of my weight. I mean, Lord, I, I do have a, I'm carrying an extra 50 pounds on my body. Um, I'm my goal, my Good weight for me is 180 due to my muscle mass. Um, and I'm at 228 right now. So I'm a good 50 pounds overweight. Uh, I don't know if I'll ever get rid of that just because of my injury and having to sit in a recliner for, the, you know, from about two, one, one o'clock on, depending on when I get started in the morning. I usually do not go past 1 2 o'clock and the day we got started we got started here at eight o'clock and I told Mark when I finished the pipe I said Mark I gotta stop I I'm done he goes I am too he goes I am I'm getting tired and uh, so we stopped at two o'clock but like I said I really paid the price for being on my feet that long but anyway Guys, I just wanted to share the little incident that how I felt. Uh, it was the feeling I used to feel before transition when I'd be around the guys and stuff, knowing that, you know, they talked with me, but I just wasn't in their social way. I don't know how to explain it. Maybe some of you can explain it. I don't know how to explain it, but anyway. You guys take it one day at a time and always make your journey as simple as possible. We'll talk to you later.